morning, good morning. Come on, let's stand to our feet. We're going to begin as others are coming in. And who has stretched out the skies like a cannon? Who has stooped out the oceans with his hand? Come on. Who has measured the hills from the So 
Yes, come on, put your hands together today. How many know that the Lord is never slack in keeping his promises? That our God is faithful. That our God is great. Nothing can oppose him. Nothing or no one stands equal to him. Come on, lift your hands this morning and give him praise. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus.
Is this just a song to you today? Are you living these very words? If you have failed in this room, let me see your hand. Come on. Don't, don't be a liar today. <laughs> see, we can lift our hands even in failure and say, thank you, God, that you've never given up on me. He'll pursue you. He'll run you down out of his great love. Touch somebody and say, you know, Jesus loves you. Touch somebody else and say, he's faithful.
I worship you. This is how I fight oh, my battles. This is how. This, this is, is how, how I fight, fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. I said our Lord is good. You know what keeps going through my mind? I'm sorry, Pastor Mitchum. How many are still holding your shield of faith? As we've been singing this song, I keep seeing this big shield. Do you know what that shield does? When we hold that shield, it protects what? It protects our heart. And it says in the Word of God that that shield of faith quenches some. Some. Come on, I know you know. It says it quenches all of the fiery darts of the enemy. And this morning, I just feel like maybe there's a few that have laid that shield down. Maybe you don't feel worthy to carry it. Maybe your faith has been rocked. It's been shaken. Maybe you just don't know what tomorrow holds and you're scared. I'm going to encourage you to do exactly what we're singing. When we worship him, even in the midst of trial, even in the midst of pain, even in the midst of failure, that's faith. Come on, lift your hands with me this morning. Everybody in this room, I want you to worship him, not because I told you to, but because he's worthy. We sang about his love. We sing about his greatness. And he surrounds us with his goodness today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Give him praise. Give him honor. Give him glory. There's a table that you prepared for me in the presence of all my enemies. That's right. It's your body, the blood you shed for me. And this is how I fight my
God. You are a good, good Father. You are mighty and merciful. You are just and you are good. You are powerful yet gentle. You are love, but you still correct. And this morning, in this room, in this heart, in this soul, I sense your nearness. In this setting, I sense your presence. And I give you glory because of who you are. And I give you praise because of what you've done in my life, in the life of your church, in the life of your children, in the life of your sons and your daughters. You are worthy of all our praise. Our heart should sing and magnify you. You are awesome. You are awesome. Yes. You are awesome. Yes. Magnify him just for a moment today. He's worthy. He alone is worthy today of our praise. He alone is worthy of our honor. He alone is worthy of our love. He alone is worthy of every breath that we breathe. I don't apologize for being emotional this morning. I hope that you can be emotional when the Spirit of God moves in your life and moves around you in your life. I want to take my time this morning. I just sense the nearness of the Lord. I just sense His presence here. It's going to be a different service today than maybe what we've been accustomed to over the past uh, couple of weeks, couple of months. I just sense a settling of the Spirit of the Lord in the house of God this morning. Maybe you are sensing that right there in your living room where you're at today. Maybe you just sense the nearness of the Lord in your life. Before I read scripture, before I preach this morning, I want to take some time this morning. I want to just, ha- just give me a little liberty today. I want to thank, thank you, those of you that have called to check on Pastor Michelle during the surgery, before the surgery, during the surgery, after the surgery. Many of you have gone through your own stuff. Many of you are battling your own issues, and many of you have called and texted and sent thank you cards and delivered flowers and just checked on her and asked about food and all those things. And I want to thank you for your heartfelt compassion that you've extended to her. And I want to thank, I want to thank um, Pastor Joe and I want to thank Pastor Alicia and I want to thank Sister Shirley because they have worked diligently this week. I've been in and out of the office this week a lot and they've been working to get children's church Revamped, and they've been, they're relaunching Children's Church this morning. They had to work extra hours to get some stuff done up there, and they worked hard. Sister Carol's up there this morning. That you have got some great workers here at Graceway. You have got some workers that have the heart for the kingdom. That's all I'll say this morning. And I want to tell you this morning that there's going to be a newsletter come. I'm going to put Sister Wendy on the spot today. There's a newsletter coming here probably in the next few weeks, maybe sooner than that. She's going to update you on the lives of our missionaries that we support around the globe. We're dealing with COVID-19 right here. You're dealing with COVID-19 right where you are. These folks, these ladies and gentlemen are having to deal with COVID-19 on their continents as well. And so Sister Wendy's going to be bringing some information to you in the next next, uh, short period of time to let you know how your missionaries are doing. 
But I want to acknowledge one special person this morning. And I'm not sure if she's still here. She's still here because I see her sitting in the back. I want to acknowledge one special person this morning. Uh, one young lady in our midst today has uh, gone through some changes in the last uh, short period of time. She had a son that she sent off to Penn State for college. She had another son that she had the privilege to go and see him process through and get on a plane and fly off to basic military training at Lackland Air Force Base in San Antonio, Texas. And today is her birthday. So I want you to help me wish Sister Shirley Bowen a very happy birthday today. Happy birthday. Cards coming. <laughs> Amen. I just felt like doing that this morning because sometimes we go through and we don't, I don't, I'm guilty of not acknowledging people as often as I should. Some would say maybe I do it too much, but I don't feel like I do it enough. And I wanted to let these folk know this, this morning how much I appreciate them and how much you appreciate them as, as uh, being leaders here at Graceway. If you've got your Bible, I want you to go with me to the book of Genesis this morning. We've got some folk that are traveling and are working and on other assignments today. And so we're praying that God would help them where they are and uh, continue to pray for Pastor. As you find Genesis, the, uh, the, the 19th chapter, continue to pray for Pastor Michelle. Um, she doesn't have the very best caregiver in the world. I'm talking about myself. Um, I, I, sometimes I get a little anxious and, and want, some, want to do some stuff and I shouldn't be that way and I'm trying to get better but I want to thank my daughter Julie for being to help take care of mom and my sister-in-law Georgie that flew up last week to help get things prepared for this week so just continue to pray for us and we'll continue to pray for you and God's going to get glory amen Genesis chapter 19 stay in Genesis chapter 19 but find your finger over in Luke chapter 17 as well I want to bring something to you this morning that God has troubled me with this week and I'm going to try my very best to deliver it to us in such a way that God gets glory and you and I as his children, as his church, as his sons and his daughters, we receive the good, the implanted word of the Lord in our lives today. Genesis chapter 19, and you can remain seated this morning. You've been standing for a little bit. I'll uh, just ask you to give your, your honor to the reading of the word of the Lord. The 19th chapter of Genesis chapter 17 says this. So it came to pass... When they brought them outside, that he said, Escape for your life. Do not look behind you nor stay anywhere in the plain. Escape to the mountains, lest you be destroyed. Genesis 19, verse 26 says, But his wife looked back behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. Luke, the 17th chapter, verse 32, Jesus speaks these three words. Remember Lot's wife. Remember Lot's wife. I want to talk to us a little bit this morning about this thought. Stop looking back. Stop looking back. Father, in Jesus' name, I am praying and I am believing today God, that you are going to speak to your church that is here physically. You're going to speak to your church that is connected to us digitally and virtually this morning. Master, I'm believing that you're going to speak into our hearts and you're going to speak into our lives. And we're going to have some illumination take place in our spirits today, God. And we're going to leave the church different than when we came. And when those click off on Facebook Live or on YouTube, God, they're going to click off different than when they clicked on. Master, I'm praying today, Lord, that you would give me clarity to speak. Not my words, Lord, but your words. God, that you would give us all the ears that we would hear. Not just the mere words of a man, but God, we would hear the words of your spirit. And Master, I'm praying more than that, God, that that word would find a place to settle and to dwell in our hearts. That it would produce in us what you desire to produce in us. And that we would give you glory for what you do in Jesus' name. And somebody say with me this morning, amen. And amen. Stop looking back. I was sitting in the office this week getting things ready in my time coming and going, trying to get my mind centered around what God would have me to speak on for us this morning. And the story of Lot and the story of Lot's wife kept coming into my spirit. I don't know why. I didn't know why. I know why now. 
It kept coming to my mind, and I kept hearing the words of Christ, and Christ would say, remember Lot's wife. Now, Jesus, when he said that in Luke, the 17th chapter, he is in the middle of giving a, a statement to folk as it relates to the coming of the kingdom, as it relates to the coming of the glory of the Lord. He prefaces that verse on the phrase or on the words that, you know, if you're up on top of the house, don't go back into the house and get some things. Don't turn back. Remember Lot's wife. But I reminded the story of Lot, and many of us hear the story of Lot, and we kind of give Lot a bad rap, and we give Lot's wife a bad rap. But I believe if we'll look deeper into what the Scripture says, that we'll be able to perceive the, some of the truths that are in that Scripture, some of the truths that are in that Word that will help us navigate through the life that we find ourselves living today. Because I feel and I fear that at times in our life, Pastor Joe mentioned this morning, you know, the, this great shield of faith that he that he envisioned, and, 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 and someone laying their shield, down. I, I, like Pastor Joe, I fear that sometimes that we forget where we are and we look back as if we were longing for what we had been and longing for where we were and longing for what we had uh, had to experience and we fail to realize that if we look back that we are actually handcuffing ourselves into what we can experience today and what we can embrace tomorrow. Stop looking back. Lot, his family find themselves in an unusual situation. Here in Genesis, the 19th chapter, but it didn't start there. Finds themselves in a place that the Bible says was created not because of Lot and not because of Lot's wife and not because of Lot's children, his daughters, but it was created because of a very great uh, sin and a very great Outcry. The Bible says in the 13th chapter of Genesis chapter 13, but the men of Sodom were exceedingly wicked and sinful against the Lord. The men of Sodom were exceedingly wicked and sinful against the Lord. Now, you have to go back and you have to read the story of Abram. You have to read the story of Sarai. You have to read the story of Lot. And you have to understand what's taking place in their life and what happens between the 13th chapter of Genesis and we, where we find ourselves positioned now in the 19th chapter of Genesis. There's a lot that transpires in those six chapters. I'll read it right now. Go back and read it this afternoon so that you can re familiar yourself with the story but there are some things that are taking place in those six chapters that we find ourselves positioned on the verses in chapter number 19 today as it relates what's going on God is getting ready to destroy these cities God has had enough of Sodom God has had enough of Gomorrah God has had enough of their wickedness God has had enough of the sinfulness and God is getting ready to rain down destruction on these two particular cities but before he does he is going to make a way for those in the city because of Abram's prayer, because of the righteous that was in the city. He's going to make a way for those that are righteous to be able to escape destruction. Oh, we could stay there and plow for a little while, but that's not my assignment today. He sends angels to the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, if you understand, when you have, if you're like me, when you have a visitor that comes to your home, you want to welcome them. If they come at a certain time of the day, you might want to prepare a meal for them. If they come at a certain time of the day, you might welcome them in for a cup of coffee and you may talk about your day. You may talk about the beginning of your day or the ending of your day. In other words, there's going to be some hospitality that you extend to foreigners or to strangers or to visitors that come into your home. Lot was raised in that kind of family. He was raised in that kind of heritage. Lot's wife was not. Some Bible theologians believe that Lot's wife was a citizen of the city of Sodom. Call her a Sodomite. Some believe that Lot, when he saw the beautiful plains and made his way towards Sodom and Gomorrah and said, I'll go this way, Abram, you can go that way. And then he finds himself stationed and he's sitting in the seat of the, uh, the gate of the city. He has elevated, been elevated to a place of, uh, of authority or place of leadership. Uh, some believe that because of that, Lot took a Sodomite woman as his wife and she bore him two children. Lot knew what it was to be hospitable to, to visitors that come into your home. Huh? Lot, Lot was raised in that kind of mind, that kind of mentality. His wife was not. So when these angels showed up and they came with the warning, they were going to stay in the open square. I'm going to give you a little Bible history and then we're going to get into the sermon. Don't count this as my sermon time yet. 
They were going to stay in the open square. But Lot knew of the depravity that was in his city. Lot knew the wickedness that was in his city. Lot goes out into the open square and says, Please, I beg of you, don't stay here. Come stay in my home. Now, Lot is accustomed to, to being, uh, to being uh, welcoming to strangers. His wife was not. And so as Lot wants to present to these strangers, Lot's wife is resistant to what Lot is trying to do. And so what Lot wants to do is Lot wants some salt. He's got to prepare some things that he can offer. He wants salt. And, and Lot's wife doesn't have salt in the house that she wants to give away. So some Bible theologians believe that what Lot's wife did was she left the home and went to neighbor's house inquiring of salt from them and when they asked her why she go, told them that there were foreigners that Lot had welcomed into their home. So she set the stage up for what was going to take place just few verses later when the men of the city now remember the men of the city were wicked and sinful in the eyes of God when they surrounded the house we understand how the men knew that those men were in the house because Lot's wife told the story. Lot didn't create the crisis of Sodom and Gomorrah. Lot's wife didn't create the crisis of Sodom and Gomorrah. Lot's children didn't create the crisis of Sodom and Gomorrah. What created the crisis of Sodom and Gomorrah was the wickedness and the sinfulness of the men in the city. I wish somebody would hear what I'm saying this morning. But what does the Bible say when he speaks to us about looking back? What does the Bible say about us looking back? There's three points I want to bring out to us this morning. I'll try to preach them relatively quickly, but I really want you to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. The first thing that the Bible says about looking back is this, that we simply have to have, and we have to let the mind of Christ reign in our life. We have to have the mind of Christ. What does the mind of Christ do in your life? The mind of Christ settles your perspective. The mind of Christ, no matter what's going on around you, the mind of Christ keeps you settled and secure. So, in the middle of something that's crisis, in the middle of something that may be uh, difficult, if we look back, what happens is we lose the mind of Christ and our perspective changes and our focus begins to shift. Our focus shifts from what is to what has been. If we look back, we lose the perspective. If we look back, we lose the mind of Christ. If we look back, our focus now shifts from what is right in front of us to what is behind us. And really what's behind us, although this was taking place at the same time, although as they were making their way out of the city, the angel said, listen, don't stay here. Don't stay in the plains. Don't look back. Go to the mountains. When, when, the, when hell and brimstone began to rain down on Sodom and Gomorrah, although it was happening in her now moment, what was taking place was the destruction of her past. I'm talking about Lot's wife. It was happening at the very same time. And her, pers her perspective changed from her now present to what had been. It changed from where she was in that particular moment to what she was accustomed to. Her perspective changed. Her focus changed. It shifted. And I want to tell you something about your past and about my past and about the past of Lot, Lot's wife and Lot's daughters. It's a past that can't be relived and it should not be rehearsed. And I want to tell you this morning, those of you on Facebook, I want to tell you something you've got in common with everybody in this room and everybody in your home and everybody you're going to come in contact with. Everybody has a past. And looking back at your past, you can't relive it, but you should not rehearse it. Don't let your head shift from where you are. Don't let your focus shift from where you are. Don't let your perspective change from where you are to where you have been because you're not there anymore. There's a, there's a danger to looking back. And the main danger is we lose the mind of Christ. We lose the ability to stay centered and to stay grounded even in the middle of something that may be a little in our perspective it may be a little uh, catastrophic it may be a little it may be a little uh, a little difficult at that time don't lose your focus don't let your perspective change keep your mind keep your mind stayed on him whose mind is stayed on you keep your mind stayed on him who loves you with a love that you cannot comprehend keep your your mind stayed on him who knows what's better
better for you than you know for yourself. Keep your mind stayed on him who has the number of your hairs numbered and he bottles the tears that flow out of your eyes. Keep your mind stayed on him in the middle of something difficult. Don't lose your perspective. Stop looking back. Stop looking back. Lot's wife was concerned more for what was than what was to come. I'm going to say that one more time. Lot's wife was more concerned about what was than what was to come. What does she have? She had a backward mindset and she had a, a reverse way of thinking. Sometimes we fall into that same category. We have a backwards mindset and a reverse way of thinking. Keep your mind stayed on Christ. Don't let your perspective change. Don't be so concerned about what was, but make sure that you stay concerned with what is to come. Listen, your steps have been ordered. He knows where he's leading you. He knows where he's sending you. He knows what the outcome is. Keep your mind on that and realize that that is done but this is yet to be. And if I'm going to see this, I've got to keep my perspective on this. I've got to keep my focus on this. I've got to keep my vision on this. I can't let that pull me back to that. If I let that pull me back to that, I will never see what's in front of me. Don't look back. Stop looking back. She was more concerned with what was. What was. And I know that sometimes we use these kind of phrase. Well, back in the good old days, nobody's ever said that here, just the people on Facebook Live this morning. You know, back in the good old days, what that speaks to is our looking back. Back in the good old days, well, why can't today be a good day? Hello, somebody. Why can't tomorrow be a good day? Why can't the days to come be a good day? I'm not saying forget the past. What I'm saying is make a conscious decision to not live in the past. Stop looking back. Hello, somebody. We all long for what happened in the good old days. How's it going to take place today? It's going to take place today when you and I start living in this day. What we desire to have this day be like the good old days. Stop desiring to look back. Stop desiring to go back. Stop desiring to have that same kind of life experience. You can't relive it, and we shouldn't be rehearsing it. I'm going to talk to you on Facebook. Listen, you can't relive yesterday, so don't rehearse yesterday. Stop looking back. That's the first point. The second thing that the Bible says about looking back is simply this. The psalmist declares to us in the 23rd Psalms, give us this day our daily bread give it to us today what's he saying what the psalmist is saying is let me receive everything I need in my life for this particular day that I'm alive give me what I need for this particular day now he's talking about give me this day my daily bread give me what give give me what's required for me to have a successful day today whatever that is let me receive it today don't let me look back let me let me let me be able to just embrace the goodness of God today give me this day my daily bread why because when we look back when we start looking back what it does is it causes us to freeze in place when we look back what it does is it causes is difficulty for us to be able to navigate even through the day that we have that we are experiencing right now. Listen, I want to tell you, we got to stop looking back because if we look back, we freeze in today. And if we freeze in today, we're not embracing the goodness that God is giving to us in this particular day. We got to have a mind of Christ, but we got to tell God, give us this day our daily bread. Lord, let my needs be met however you want to meet them today. However you want to, however you want to take care of me, let it be today. Let me keep my my, my vision and my eyes and my perspective on the day that you have blessed me with. I can't do anything about yesterday. It's gone. I can't do anything about tomorrow. It may never arrive, but let me be able to fully embrace. Give me this day, Lord. Let me have right now in my life right here what I need to get through this day. Let me not look back, but let me stay right here. Matter of fact, the children of Israel, if you go back and read their story, they long for what was in yesterday. They long for the leeks. They long for the cucumbers. They long to go back into captivity. They weren't satisfied. Oh my Lord in heaven. They weren't satisfied with their now, with their day. They were looking back. They wanted to go back. 
Stop looking back. Stop looking back. Stop looking back. Give me this day my daily bread. Let me be able to receive all that you want me to have in this day. If we look back, it makes it unable for us to navigate through our life now. Have you ever tried to go forward looking backward? Have you ever tried to drive your car forward looking backward? You know, cars today, they, they're, they're just wonderful technological advances. Back when I was young getting my license all those years ago, and we had to go take our driver's test, and one of the driving parts of the driver's test was you had to put your car in reverse, and you had to back up so many feet with the driver instructor beside you. That means you had to put your car in reverse, put your hand on the car seat, turn your head around and drive looking backward. But now cars are so smart, you put your car in reverse. You've got a camera that will show up on your computer screen. It will give you the backwards view of your car. And you can just, some cars do, Sister Yipun. I see you shaking your head. And you can drive backwards. If you're careful, you can drive backwards looking at that reverse camera. But you can't, you can't drive forward looking in reverse. You, you can't go where your eyes are not looking. As a matter of fact, one of, one, one of the favorite guys that has a lot of quotes, some of them funny, and, and he could be considered maybe a little bit uh, uh, controversial, but he had this saying back in the, in the 60s and 70s. He said, float like a butterfly and sting like a bee. Your eyes can't or your hands can't hit what your eyes can't see. Rumble, young man, rumble. That was Muhammad Ali, for those of you that don't know who that was. We hear the first part of that, that slogan, float like a butterfly and sting like a bee. But we don't rarely hear the rest of that quote. Your hands can't hit what your eyes can't see. What does that mean for your now? That means you can't do now what you're looking. If you're looking at your past, you can't do what you need to do in your now moment because your eyes aren't fixed on your now. Your eyes are fixed on what's behind you. Your eyes are looking behind you. Don't let your... Don't let your vision shift. Don't let your looking back create difficulty in your day, but keep your vision looking forward. Don't find yourself frozen in place. We know the story of Lot. They make their way out of the city. Lot, Lot's wife, they don't even give her a name. I'm just going to call her Lot's wife. She's Mrs. Lot's wife. They're running out of this destruction that's taking place. Lot, his wife, and their daughters, they're going to the mountains where the angels told them to go. And somewhere in the journey, Lot's wife decided she wanted to stop and take one more glance back at home. She found herself turned into, the Bible says, a pillar of salt. She was frozen in time. Why? Because she did not know the value of not looking back. Some of us, some of you are frozen in time because you haven't learned the value of not looking back. And you keep looking back so long that you can't even get through the day that you've got in front of you because your eyes are looking in the wrong direction. Your eyes are looking in the wrong place. You can't do what's in front of you because your eyes are looking behind you. What, what does that mean about Lot's wife? What's, what, what can we learn from Lot's wife? Lot's wife, here it is right here. Lot's wife was more satisfied with her life. Lot's wife was more satisfied with her life than with her living. I'm going to say that one more time. Lot's wife was more satisfied with her life than with her living. The angel said, leave this place. Don't stay in the plains lest you be destroyed. Go to the mountains. But she was so satisfied with the life that she had. She was so satisfied with the place that she lived. She was so satisfied at the belongings that she owned. She was more satisfied with her life than with her living. Her life. In her mind, her life was being destroyed. But she didn't realize that what was being destroyed was the past, but her living was yet in front of her. She was running toward her living until she froze in time to look back at her life. Now, I'm not saying don't remember your life, but I'm saying don't stay in the past. You hear me this morning, Facebook? Type amen right there. Right there, we're on the keyboard. Just type amen. 
Listen, if you want to go, if you want to be living, you want to be living for the Lord, that's a, that is a forward thing. That is a moving thing. That is a going in a good direction thing. Sometimes life will keep you stuck. And if we get so focused on life, we find ourselves frozen in time, unable to achieve today, unable to achieve what's in front of us because we are stuck in our life now moment. She was more satisfied with life than living. Stop looking back. Are y'all hearing what God is saying this morning? Come on, are you hearing what God is telling you this morning on Facebook Live? I knew this was going to be different. I knew it, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it a thousand times I knew it. Stop looking back. I'm not telling you anything. I'm not telling you anything. I'm not told myself. Stop looking back. Don't let your life freeze you in your living right now. Don't let what has been keep you stuck in where you are at this moment. Don't be like Lot's wife. Don't be more satisfied with life than the possibility of living. Point number two. Point number three is simply this. What does the Bible say about looking back? The Bible says God has plans for you. I know the thoughts I think toward you, says the Lord. I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, to give you a past and a failure. No, to give you a future and a hope. To give you a future and a hope. To bring you to, bring you to a place of destruction. No, to bring you, I'm having fun with you this morning, to bring you to an expected end. God knows what he's got in store for your life. God knew what he had in store for Lot. God knew what he had in store for Lot's wife. God knew what he had in store for Lot's children. God knew what their outcome was to be. God had a plan for them. You say, wait a minute now, preacher. If you're telling me that because she looked back that somehow she canceled her plans or somehow the, 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 the plan was forfeited, it wasn't that God changed his mind. It's that she was disobedient to what God said. Hello? Hello, somebody. If you leave that alone, if you won't mess with that, if you'll give that up, I'll give you something better. If don't touch, listen, leave that alone and I'll go to the store and get you something better. But don't mess with that. But if you're so fixed on messing with that, do you think I'm going to go to the store and get you something better? No. It's not that I changed my mind. It's that you thought that th this or that is better than what could be in life. Hello, somebody. God didn't change his mind, but nor did he make Lot's wife, nor did he make her make the decisions she made. She had the choice to make those decisions. Hello, somebody. I hope somebody's receiving this this morning. Well, I just ain't where I am right now where I think God wants me to be. I just don't find myself there yet. Well, it's not God's. He didn't change his mind. He didn't, he didn't pull the plan switch on you. He didn't, dangle a, he didn't dangle a carrot, and then when you take the carrot, he didn't do that. we, we got to be able to make the choices he tells us to, to make during the days that we live so we can arrive and we can acquire and we can be and we can do and we can come to not our expected end. Hear me now, to his expected end. Hello? We are good at planning our life, and sometimes we plan our life with God not even in the middle of our life. Hello, somebody. We have plans and sometimes, I'm, I'm not talking, I'm, we have, listen, Facebook, sometimes you have plans and what you do is you fail to put God in the middle of your plans. And then when the plans don't work out, you get mad at God when it wasn't God's plan to begin with. Hello, somebody. Stop looking back. Stop letting your head turn back. Stop looking back at what was. Stop looking back at yesterday. Stop looking back at what had been. Don't let you look back and cancel or forfeit the plans that God has for your life. You know what the Bible says about looking back? The Bible says this. No one who has put their hands to the plow 
I'm going to get real with you now. No one who has put their hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Hello? No one that has their hand on what God said he wants you to do. You cannot be fit for the kingdom. You can't be fit for the kingdom with your hand on the plow and your head in reverse. Stop. Stop looking back. Stop looking back. The plans were forfeited. The, the future was canceled, not because God changed, but because she was disobedient to what God said. Hello, somebody. Looking back. Looking back is simply an indicator of where your affections are. Looking back is an indicator of where your affections are. What means? What's got that deep meaning in your heart and in your life? <laughs> you know, I was singing this song. I love the music this morning, by the way. They were singing this song this morning. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. You know who I saw when they were singing that song? I saw Carmen the Avis standing right here, not lusting for the past, but longing for the future. You can never, you can never achieve, you can never arrive at where your affection is not. If your affection is in the past, it will never be turned into and transformed into a longing for the future. <laughs> Paul said, I long to go there. I long to be there. But it's expedient for me to be right here right now. Did you hear what he said? I long to be there. But for right now, it's better for you if I remain here. What Paul is telling us is my affection is not right here with you right now. My affection is right there. It's where I'm going to. But because I'm obedient to God, I'm going to stay right where I am right here. But I'm not going to let this past experience, I'm not going to let this this, what happened before, I'm not going to let this turn into my affection. My affection is not here. My affection, I don't know about you, but I want to go to heaven. I'm longing to go to heaven. I want my house. I want my castle. I want my building. I want, listen, I want my address to be 333 Grace Lane in heaven. I want my, my mailbox to be right in the middle of the golden street that goes right in front of 333 Grace Lane. I'm longing for that. My affection is there. Listen, I don't know about you. I'm 53 years old and if, 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 if statistic tells me anything I have lived here uh, I have lived here past longer than I will continue to live here if, the, if statistics is right. I'm longing to go to the place where I was designed to be for all of an eternity. I'm not longing for what had been. I'm, I'm not lusty for what had been. I'm longing for what is to come. Stop Looking back. Well, if I could go back and do my 20s again, I've, I've heard that I've played that game before. I'm sure you have too. Oh, to be 17 again. Oh, to be 27 again. Oh, to be 35 again. No, 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 no. No, no, no. No, I'm happy right where I am because I'm closer to heaven today than I was yesterday. Somebody help me this morning. I'm not lusting for what has been. I'm longing for what will be. My affection isn't on what, had, what has happened and where I have been. My affection is on what I'm going to receive when I get there. And I hear him say, well done. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the joys of the Lord. Listen, stop looking. Stop looking back. Don't let your plans be canceled and your plans and your future be forfeited because of our inability to follow along with the obedience to the word of the Lord, what his word says to us. God has a plan for you and me. 
Lot's wife. What's the lesson? Lot's wife lost the possibility. Lot's wife lost the possibility to lead her children and embrace her posterity. She lost it. It wasn't taken from her. She made the choice to get She, she made the choice to give it up. How? By looking back. Stop looking back. The story of Lot's wife. Come on up, praise team, and help me. The story of Lot's wife speaks to the difficulty to depart completely from an old lifestyle and an old way of living. The story of Lot's wife speaks to the difficulty of completely departing from an old lifestyle and an old way of living. One of my favorite verses in the Bible is 2 Corinthians 5, 17. I've, I quoted it on more than one occasion. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. But it's difficult. It's difficult. It's a challenge to leave an old lifestyle or an old way of living. How can you say that, preacher? Because when I read the story of Lot and I see what happened to his wife... That's what it says to me. It was difficult for her to let go. It was difficult for her to leave. It was difficult for her not to look back. Difficult for her. But is anything too hard for the Lord? Is anything too hard for the Lord? The answer to that is no. It's not. The challenge is this, church. My extended Graceway family, my online campus. The challenge is this. That we have to oftentimes learn the lessons from other people. So that we don't make the same mistakes that they made. Remember Lot's wife not because she was a bad person not because she was evil remember Lot's wife for the lessons you can learn from the example that she shows through the scripture that we read let's learn let's learn those lessons from Lot's wife let's learn them what's the lessons here are the lessons right here Let's have a forward focus. Let's have a forward focus with right thinking so that we can live a transformed life. I'm going to say it one more time. Let's have a forward focus so that we can have right thinking so that we can live a transformed life. How does that happen? It happens when we stop looking back. It happens, my friends, when you stop looking back. I have to remind myself, stop looking back. That's my prayer for us today. Glance back from time to time, not to live there, but to remember the goodness of God. Glance back from time to time, not to go back there, but to remember what we've been brought from, what we've been brought out of. Look back from time to time, not to lust, but to give us a deeper desire to long for what's ahead of us. Stop looking back. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, life throws a vast array of challenges to us. Life throws a vast array of difficulties our way, uncertainties our way. Life has a way of throwing its fair amounts of curveballs. 
that ended up being something it was never intended to be. And God, sometimes life wears on us. And sometimes that shield of faith that Pastor Joe alluded to this morning, sometimes that shield of faith gets kind of heavy. Sometimes that shield of faith may begin to weigh. Sometimes that shield of faith may get laid down. And sometimes what happens is our vision shifts. Our focus is changing. Our perspective goes back. We have a, now a reverse way of thinking and a negative mindset. We begin to look back. We begin to dream about that. We begin to long or lust after that. But God, I'm praying today, Lord. I'm praying today, God, that you would give us forward thinking. Let us see ahead of us. Let us see right now and ahead of us. Let us see a right way to navigate through life. Let us leave today. Let us go into tomorrow and the days to come. Let us go into those days having been transformed because we refuse as the people of God to allow the past to shift our vision and to change our perspective. Let us go into tomorrow with a shield of faith that's, that's up strong, that we're holding tight to. Master, I pray this morning for these that are here and for those that are watching. God, I pray right now that the heart of a son or a daughter, the heart of a child, the heart of a young man and a young lady is grasped this morning by your spirit. Master, I pray this morning that in the grasping of that spirit, God, that you begin to knock on their heart's door and they begin to sense your love in their life and your desire to bring them out and to walk with them through and to bring them into the promises you've got for their life. Master, I pray that that heart that's been convicted this morning understands that and simply cries out to you and ask you to forgive, ask you to set free and ask you to cover their sins to save them. There's no doubt, Lord, you're bringing destruction. But before you bring destruction, you're going to make a way for those that choose and make a decision. You're going to make a way out. You're going to make a way out so that you can open the door and usher us in. God, help us. Help us to be strong and stop looking back. They made a mistake. You made a mistake. Maybe you made a mistake yesterday. Maybe you made a mistake this morning. Maybe you look at your life and you think your life is a mistake. Let me tell you something. Your life is not a mistake. You were created because God has a plan for your life. Your existence is not a mistake. Don't let the adversary give you that lie. Don't buy into that lie and stop letting, stop letting that mistake cause you to start looking back or keep looking back. I want you to hear what this boy and preacher is telling you this morning. God loves you enough right where you are to break the chains off of your life and usher you into a new day, a transformed day, a day filled with his promises and filled with his plans and a future that's bright for your life. But you got to make a choice. You have to make the choice to stop looking back, just like I've got to make the choice to stop looking back. That's my prayer today for us. That's my prayer. They're going to usher us back into singing. I'm going to linger, linger around this altar this morning. If you want to come and join me and spend some time with God in worship and prayer, let me encourage you to meet me here. If you've got a need in your life and you want to bring it to God and you need somebody to agree with you, I'll be here to meet with you here. If you just want to come and bask in His presence, you can come and join me around these altars. Let us embrace Him. Let us look forward to the future. Let us not lust for yesterday, but let us long for the days to come in Jesus' name. Will you join me this morning? Will you join me this morning? These altars are open. This is for you. This is for you. This is for you. 
Come on and lead us, Pastor Joe.
Who in here this morning would say, that's me this morning, I need to move? Who in here would say, that's me, I need to move? I'm going to ask you, if you got your hand up, if, if that's you and you're watching us, just type on there. there. There's somebody that's watching that they'll respond back to you. Just type in there, I need to move. If that's you and you need to move, I want you to come stand with me this morning. If that's you and you say, I need to move, I want you to come and stand with me this morning. Come on. Right here. <laughs> right here. I need to move. I need to move. I need to move. The words to this song are not simply words to a song. It's truth. It's truth. It's true. Is anything too hard for the Lord? No. No. And the move you need is not too hard for God. The move you need is not too hard for God. Stop looking back. Stop looking back. in front of you and there's a God that goes before you that makes the crooked places straight and makes the rough places smooth that make the mountains be pulled down and the valleys to be exalted there's nothing too hard for God you need to move make a choice decide to look ahead with faith in God to walk out the move in your life at this moment. Jesus name. Miracles happen. Miracles happen. Miracles happen. Things are transformed. People are transformed. Situations are transformed. Come on. Hallelujah. In Jesus name.
God of restoration. Hallelujah. He's a God of restoration. Hallelujah. His mercy never ends. His mercy never ends. When my anxious heart seeks the peace of God, I'm reminded of His word that His promises are true, that His mercy never ends. Someone sing it with me. Comfort to my heart is found. 